Um, so I am Brianne Ford. I'm the enrollment specialist for the program. So uh, my entire role is to help you throughout the enrollment and admissions process as a student. And then, um, of course, you know, after you get registered for classes, I can connect you with the advisor. But we have three really great instructors from all three of our programs here with us today. So data marketing, integrated marketing, and uh, digital marketing. I'm just going to have them introduce themselves and tell you just a, a quick overview about who they are and um, how long they've been with the program. So I will have Amy go first. Hi, welcome everyone. I'm Amy Teller. I teach in the Digital Marketing Communications Program. I have been with this program for about, I think around four years now. Um, and it's, it's one of my favorite subjects. And um, I also teach at uh, the College of William & Mary where I teach um, in their Masters of Marketing program as well as their online MBA program. And um, yeah, what else did I need to say? No, that's all, that's perfect. Okay. All right, Dan, you wanna go next? Sure, hi, I'm Dan DiPiazzo um, and I lead instructor for the Data Marketing Communications Program. Um, but uh, by day, I'm the CMO at the Georgia Aquarium in Atlanta, uh, which is where I am today. And um, I'm actually a graduate of the Data Marketing Program as well in 2019 and then they asked me to stick around and teach so i've been doing that uh since the beginning of 2020 so uh really excited about that excited about the data marketing program which is pretty unique and um i think all, all the programs are great but obviously a little biased to the data program all right and then matthew yeah, thanks, Bree. So I'm a 2006 graduate of the IMC program. So I guess I'm one of the OG uh, faculty members and students here. Um, I teach IMC 610. So I taught this intro course in the IMC program since 2006. Uh, for my day job, I lead PR and media relations, spokesperson for a, a Fortune 500 insurance company here in, uh, in Pennsylvania. All right, wonderful. So um, like I said earlier, the, uh, I want you all to basically take this time uh, and have the opportunity to ask any of the three instructors about um, you know, any hesitations that you may have or some questions about the courses, the course load. Um, obviously, I have answered some of your questions leading up to now, but it's just a great opportunity to be able to have the inside source and um, ask away. So whoever wants to go first, be, feel free to either unmute or put it in the chat, but um, go ahead and ask anything. I guess I can um, go first. Um, I guess my question is more kind of towards Amy because I was just recently accepted into the digital marketing um, online master's program. And I was just kind of wondering, um, what should I kind of be doing kind of like in the meantime, I'm excited to kind of dive in all the courses, but um, kind of before that registration and like November 1st, kind of what should I be um, doing in the meantime? It's an excellent question. I think first and foremost, it's really important to try to set your expectations. So try to set yourself up for success by making sure that you have um, all of your tech you know, requirements up to date, um, making sure that you can set aside hours of time, mm -hmm. right? So earmark those days, evenings, weekends, what, however you can squeeze it in, your lunch hours. Start okay. to think about how you can um, start to fill in that time with studying. And also making sure that you have a, a space available. So really making sure you have all of your things ready to go um, mm -hmm. is probably the best suggestion I can have. Have you, uh, have you been in an online program before? Um, other than when classes kind of moved online mm -hmm. in 2020, that's kind of been my only experience with an online kind of program. So this will be kind of like my first entirely online program. 
Yeah, these courses by design are meant to be asynchronous. Okay. So hopefully it'll be a smoother process mm -hmm. uh, and your experience, overall experience will be better. But this program is fantastic. We do an excellent job of really covering, you know, all of the basics from, you know, email marketing, social media marketing, paid marketing, search engine marketing. You're going to learn all of those really important key tools Mm -hmm. And we also have certifications built into the program. So you'll be able to graduate with some professional certifications under your belt too. So you'll mm -hmm. be much more marketable when you get out. Awesome. Hi, I just kind of had a question about the overall structure of the courses. Um, how, how, how do they, uh, they work in general? Like how are they structured? So sorry about that, Samantha. You had a little bit of feedback. Um, it looks like, so sorry. Um, looks like I, I have two windows for you. So you may just have a little bit of feedback from one version or one, one platform to the other. <laughs> well, but that's an excellent question, Samantha. I'll just jump right in. Um, it's, uh, the overall structure, and I'll speak to the DMC program, the Digital Marketing Communications program, but I'm assuming that they're all kind of very similar. The early part of the week, the um, you start a new week uh, for eight weeks. Uh, you'll be in one class for eight weeks. That's usually how it goes. Um, and then you start off with getting through the readings, right? So you'll be um, reading the textbook and through the lessons. And then midweek, there is a discussion where you'll be given a prompt and you will post on the discussion board. Um, and usually that's in text format, but um, you can also post video as well. And then you'll have until the end of the week to reply to your peers to create that kind of simulate that a back and forth discussion and dialogue that happens in a real discussion. And then um, on Mondays, at least for this program, uh, we have a writing assignment due on Monday night. Um, and then you'll start the whole process over. Yeah, that's the same same structure in the IMC program as well. So really that discussion kind of opens up on I like to say Saturday after the previous discussion has closed and students will you know, engage in the discussion and post their initial response by Wednesday. So the deadline is Wednesday for that. Uh, and then engage in the discussion and respond to each other for the balance of the week through Friday. The deadline for that discussion is Friday, Friday night. Uh, and then you have that writing assignment due on Monday. So the, the key deadlines are Wednesday for the initial post, Friday for response post, and then Monday for the assignment submission. Um, and most of the courses, I believe, Bree, correct me if I'm wrong, are, are six graded discussions and six graded assignments um, throughout. So, uh, and then kind of that first week of, of grad school in the intro course is a, kind of an easier week. You don't have that assignment due usually until that, the second week, so Monday of the second week. And all the, yeah, and, and the data program is the same schedule, and, and I think that's what's good is throughout um, throughout the program, you'll find that that same schedule prevails. So once you get in a rhythm, yeah. um, it just really flows. Um, you know, I had a tough adjustment at first because it's like you know just kind of getting onto it. But then once you realize that you can start to gauge your own uh, time around that and know, you know, in my case, you know, I, I would usually have to work on Saturday or Sunday to get my paper done. I didn't always want to be toward the end of the, the time, but because I was working through the week, it was hard to do. But, um, but you just kind of block out your time because it's the same throughout the throughout the program that really helps. And that, I think uh, for Chris, you know, Chris asked a question earlier about what, what he should be doing now. And I think knowing that, so we just gave you kind of that structure. You don't have to wait for the syllabus. You can start to think, to Amy's point, about what your routine might look like. So knowing that you have that initial discussion response, 
you know, maybe you, you say every Monday night, I want to, uh, I want to work on that. You kind of start to carve that out, whether it's mentally or actually putting it into your calendar to block out that time. Yeah, whenever I was a student in the IMC program, um, I always had that time blocked off. Like Tuesday nights, I would just work on my discussion board post, mm -hmm. make sure I had my sources for it. Um, and I would usually type it out in a Word document. And then Wednesday night, as I was going to post it, I would just briefly read over it, make sure that, you know, I didn't miss anything. And then once I posted on Wednesday night, I would start my responses and I kind of separated those out. Like I do one on Wednesdays, two on Thursdays, and maybe two on Fridays. That way I knew I had the exact amount that I needed. And then I would start also researching and getting everything ready for my paper throughout the weekend. So really just building that into your life. And that's one thing that we talk about a lot with this program is that it's it's great to fit it into your life. You're not trying to make your life fit into school anymore, right? So like with undergrad, I always worked a full-time job and it was really difficult having that non-flexibility with a, with a synchronous um schedule but with asynchronous it's really nice because you can you can fit your time slots where they work best and to dovetail off of that in our syllabi we usually offer some just very general guidelines regarding the amount of time that uh, you should kind of earmark for these assignments and the general rule of thumb is about five to six hours for reading each week about four to six hours for the initial post uh, for your discussion and about two to three hours for your replies for that discussion and then about four to six hours for your writing assignment. So if you can start to think about how you can block some of those times out that ends up being about 15 to 20 or so hours a week. So it's kind of synonymous to a part time job right and then there's a huge variability. Uh, involved in that, depending on your level of understanding of the material, and some weeks are going to be less work, and um, the end, usually there's a final deliverable that's weighted a little bit more, and so you might have to spend a little more time in that final week. Um, you do usually have a couple extra days to get that in, so, um, but that'll give you a general guideline as to when you're thinking about how much time is this really going to take. That's a good rule of thumb. I guess my follow up to that um, will be, uh, so what is um, the policy if you cannot, you know, like sometimes there'll be like military duties that um, they take precedence no matter what else. Uh, so what's the policy if, if there's something that you need to make up, is there availability for makeup assignments or things like that? Well, I think the, the late policy is is pretty consistent, I, I think. Um, and there is a little bit of flexibility discussions. There really isn't flexibility because they happen in real time. So, you know, it'd be hard to come back in on Saturday and now join a discussion that's already ended, you know, so so those you pretty much have to do. So, you know, as much as you can anticipate and at least get your initial discussion in first, you know, early, that would be good. Um, and on the written assignments, there is um, basically a 24 hour grace period with a five point deduction. So you do have to take a hit on the grade um, if it's going to be late. And again, I've sometimes had students come to me and say, hey, I know this is going to be going on. Is it OK if I turn in late? And I said, well, if you know what's going on, why don't you turn it in early? So, you know, as much as you can anticipate and try to get ahead of things. But we know sometimes things come up and, you know, in, in extreme circumstances, you just need to talk to your instructor um, because there, there's a little bit of leeway for the instructors, but it's a kind of a firm university policy that they put in place um, that allows you that that 24 hour grace period, but um, but with a deduction. Yeah, if I if I could add to that, Samantha, um, you know, it, the, the nice thing about this asynchronous model is that everything is accessible and available really from from day one so you can you can plan in advance to dan's point you can you can submit those things early i've had students who maybe they're going to a conference or they're traveling and they'll submit an assignment 
you know, four or five days before it's due because they had access to it from day one in the class. So they were able to kind of work ahead in anticipation of, of what, you know, what might be coming up. So that's, uh, that's also a, a good thing. Um, and you can, and there, we're never going to ask you to be logged in or, you know, this, this is a synchronous session here, this AMA, right, by its very nature, but we're never going to ask you to be, you know, connected in at a certain time. And so you really can kind of structure your discussion engagement and your assignment submissions around your schedule. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I'll just uh, just mean one little further thing on that. I've had some students even just recently who um, were, were, were good students who'd done all their assignments, kept up with all the discussions and all that, and then for whatever reason had to invoke that late policy and, and take the five point hit. And it didn't really affect their overall grade. You know, if, if you're if you're keeping up the work when you can, if, if something happens and uh, you, you have to have to take a little deduction. Um, generally, that's not going to throw you into a different grade tier. So I think most instructors pretty much pay attention to that and make sure that um, that that's the case. Right. Any other questions? I have a question. Sure. Uh, can can you guys each speak about how data would be integrated into the different programs? Like, I know that there's one program that specifically is geared towards utilizing data, but everything in marketing seems to be data driven. So can you speak about that, number one? And then number two, can you speak to how this program is maybe different than a marketing MBA program? Well, I can certainly speak to the first question on on you know the data because that's really the foundation of of, of that of the program that I teach in, um, and and it's it's woven in in many different ways, um, and I think we we try to explore the different dimensions, but it's really about how you apply that in the marketing communication. So it's not a data science course. It's not heavy statistics and analysis. Um, but what it does is say, okay, how do we take data that we have accessible that's there that that is you know really something that marketers need to be on top of all around and now apply it into marketing communications, whether that's audience segmentation or customizing messages or um, data visualization or you know any number of things, CRM and, and loyalty programs. So it's it's the application of data into marketing communications, and that's what kind of makes the, the program, I think, unique. Um, I, I know all the programs have some element of that. Um, it's probably just dialed up a notch more in the, in the data program. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, there is, there is some data woven in through uh, some of our courses in the um, digital marketing communications program as well. And namely the course I teach audience segmentation or one of them, um, we do have some exercises where we leverage uh, Excel and some raw data. So you can run some analyses on there for segmentation. Uh, which is fun. And then in terms of how is this different from, say, like a master's of science in marketing or a master's of marketing, uh, I would say there is a lot of emphasis put on real world applications of specific concepts um, that you can directly apply. So we talk a little bit about some strategy, but there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of learning how to do the nuts and bolts, talking about uh, user experience and website design and those best practices and specific elements that you can directly apply in a day-to-day -day job. Does that answer your question a little bit, Nova? Um, I'm, I'm not really sure because I, I would like to think that in an MBA, there's also real world application also, and it's not just kind of like theory, but I'm, I'm not sure. So um, I just wanted to get your feedback on 
what differentiated this program from an MBA in marketing. So I can uh, I can share my kind of my perspective on that, and and it won't be it won't be mine. I did not um, I didn't consider MBA programs. I was really looking to I wanted to focus on marketing. Um, so I, I don't aspire to be in the C-suite or be a CFO or a CEO. I really want to be a, a marketing and communications manager. And so I didn't consider other MBA programs, but I know I've had over the 16 years, I've had lots of students who may be transferred in from an MBA program because they were looking for that focus. So all of the courses that you take in the IMC program are going to be focused on marketing communications. In an MBA program, you may take a few courses in marketing, but a lot of that, so we're focused on the P, right? We're focused on the promotion side of marketing communications. Um, and, you know, in an MBA program, you're looking at pricing, distribution, supply chain, all of the other elements of marketing where ours is really focused on marketing communications. So one's not better than another. It's it's about fit, right? And what you what you really are focused on for your career. And I'll I'll just throw in my two cents because I I did look at some MBA programs as well at the time. Um, and quite honestly, you know, and this is different for everybody, but where I was, you know, I was I was gainfully employed. I didn't necessarily need need the degree. I thought it would be helpful to me as I went forward, and it certainly has been um, as my circumstances changed. But you know, the cost of the MBA programs I was looking at was much more. The time commitment was much more. I just couldn't see. I couldn't bring myself to do that at that stage in my life. And I thought that this was a great way to um, to advance my education and and put me in a in a stronger position. From an employment standpoint, but also um, not completely dominate my life for a couple of years. Okay, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and in the end, honest to goodness, I mean, I've gone out and and you know, just say you have a, a master's degree is you know the 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 what letters come behind it haven't mattered at least in my situation. Maybe in some organizations it would but you know but just having the advanced degree has been the, the critical part no but can i ask um it, i guess this ama goes both ways right can i ask what uh, what area of marketing marketing communications interests you the most and maybe we can help with that decision as well well so i i am actually in a post-grad certification program for data science and business analysis right now um so part, part of me thinks like, well, that would, yeah, if I keep going down that route, route, that would seem really natural, but I've already kind of got that under my belt also. Um, so I think that the, the <clears throat> and to be really honest, the, the other two um, programs, I'm not exactly sure what differentiates them from the data, but I, I would just want to be able to have a more well-rounded application of how I take in information and then create a better output um, so I think that whether that's through the, the actual understanding what graphics grab people or how to better segment people or the, the user experience, um, I just want to have a better kind of like spectrum to choose from and be like very vertical and very horizontal. Right. Kind of just want it all. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it's interesting that you have that background already, which is great because no, then I think, yeah, kind of matching that up with um how do you how do you then apply all that because what i find in my, in my work is you know we're just you know we're we're flooded inundated with data you know there, i mean i've got dashboards i've got i've got you know this thing and that thing all bookmarked and i i mean i can run it cut it this way that way the other way it really comes down to now now what do you do with that how do you right. synthesize that into something that helps you make decisions that helps you allocate resources that helps you um, measure the results of what you do um, and and how you can explain what you do in a better way. So I think that's that's what we focus on primarily throughout the you know the, the DMC program. 
Yeah, I think to your point, the, there is no lack of data now. Everybody is, has so much of it. But yeah. the, I mean, even in the business analysis program that I'm in right now, um, it's, it is actually not that focused on the what to do with it part. And I, want, right. I really want more of that. I really want right. more of that. Yeah, you know, success, success in this world is it, it's it's a mix of art and science. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, that's I mean, if I just look at the intro courses, I mean, really, you're going to look at identifying the target. How do you identify the target audience? Right. Assuming you have access to the data. How do you set those objectives for the campaign? How do you how do you develop the strategies for your campaign based on all that you know? What's that creative strategy look like? How do you incorporate paid and earned and owned into that? And then at the end, how do you evaluate the success of the campaign? So, I mean, that's essentially what you'll do in most of the intro courses. And it's also what you'll do in the capstone course, just at a higher level um, or at a greater level, I should say. And so, yeah, it's about marrying the art and science of, of this business. And it sounds like you have the science piece down and, and maybe this the, the art side, the creative side, um, what kind of, um, you know, kind of get you where you want to be. Yeah, I, I actually um, ran a small business for a long time. And so I kind of just bootstrapped everything and had the art, art stuff down pretty well. I had a great graphic artist and everything like that. But now I'm in a bigger organization. Sure. And I think that they really, they really want that um, legitimized kind of paper that says I did this. Right. Um, so that's what I'm, that's what I'm looking for. So I got the, yeah, I got the science. I got that experience, the small business experience, but now I kind of need like the big university art thing and then combine it all together. Yeah. How do you, how do you bring it, how do you bring it together to, how do I market myself? Yeah. To achieve success <laughs> and, and gain, and gain credibility um, mm -hmm. at the end of the day so that you have a seat at the table. Right. Good question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Oh, we're on a roll. What else? Yeah, I was going to say oh. this has been great content. So, um, any other additional questions? I kind of had like kind of one more question, but it was kind of more logistical in the sense of like when it comes to like, registering for courses and like how different is it from like undergrad at like because I went to undergrad at WVU also and I was just wondering in terms of like when I go to register for my courses how is it different like is there a specific track of courses I need to take like one before another or is it kind of I can pick and choose when to take courses so Amanda is incredible she's the advisor for the the program so she'll be the one that so how it will work you actually have your initial meeting with her to um, basically show you how to register for classes. It's very similar to what you did for undergrad. And she'll build out your, essentially your graduation plan. Okay. And um, we always want you to take the intro course first so mm -hmm. that you can Definitely. get all of the foundation that you need, um, especially for the looking at the marketing plan as a whole, understanding what you're going to be covering throughout the program. And then from there, she kind of builds out, depending on the semester and what courses you're wanting to take, she'll build out mm -hmm. that graduation plan. Um, that way, every semester when it comes time to register, she'll meet with you, see if you have any questions, and then she'll be able to give you those codes that you need to register for the courses. Okay. Perfect. So yeah, very similar, but Amanda will make sure, especially with the flexibility we have in the program, um, she'll make sure that, you know, if you're, if you need to drop down to part-time or you're wanting to take more courses, or maybe you've changed your mind on an elective that you want to take, um, she can adjust all of that as well. Okay. And like, that was kind of like my one follow-up question too, because I remember there was three different tracks as opposed to like, there was the accelerated track, there was the, and then the two others you don't need to be necessarily locked into one of them right like if I wanted to maybe one semester mm -hmm. if I'm working more like if I can only fit in like one course that will still be okay also yes. 
Absolutely. And she will talk with you through that as well. So if you know ahead of time, um, especially, so this might be helpful for you as well, Samantha. So if you know ahead of time that you have something going on, like during a second half of a semester, mm -hmm. um, she can definitely build out into your plan. Like maybe you take that eight week term off. So you only have like two courses in the first term and then nothing in the second, or you just have one class. Um, that's, that's totally up to you and she can build all of that into your plan. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, of course. That happens quite often, Chris. Um, okay. I mean, Brie, it's, it's still true that you have is it eight years. Eight years. Oh, yes. You yes. Graduate. Yeah. And, yeah. and I know that that sounds like for those on the call it might be, oh my gosh, like, why would it ever take eight years? Well, uh -huh. Life happens, right? And um, and you need and you need that flexibility sometimes. And so, mm -hmm. um, I've had I've had students that I had more than eight years ago, <laughs> um, who you know have who, who have just recently graduated. And um, you know, it's it's really about how does this fit into your life, and it has mm -hmm. to work both ways. Definitely. Yeah, and the, I actually took a year off in the middle of my program because I got a new job and. Mm -hmm. what well, wasn't going to be able to keep up and you know took some time off and then it ended up being a year by the time I kind of cycled back around to the courses I needed but um but then I finished it out and it's good and students often um, usually take the intro course by itself but uh, other other courses in the program if it's an area that maybe you struggle with um you know you might take that alone and then if you're taking a course you know for example my background's been in PR Mm -hmm. um and so if i was taking a pr course maybe i would double up and take another course with it because i have a strong you know background in pr and know the subject material so so you can uh, you can structure it in that way okay and like i guess i have one more follow-up question with that too when it comes to i don't know if this is just in the digital marketing um program but i know um about those certifications too that you had mentioned also those are also woven in to the program as well, correct? Like there isn't like, I remember I was looking at different universities programs too and their certifications required them to do extra coursework. But here at WVU, those are also just woven into the classes, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay. And not every single class offers a certification, um, but they're part of um, your cumulative grade for specific courses. Okay, awesome. I actually had a couple more questions. Um, so I never really got a chance to talk to you, Ms. Ford, about um, the Defense Information School yeah. um, and how that works with the integration with that. So yeah. uh, how does how does that um, that whole thing work with the credits and everything? Yes. So we have a wonderful partnership with the DIMPO School. And um, so a lot of those courses, I actually, I have a list here. <laughs> I should have gotten my list out before we started, um, but some of those courses, like the uh, the Pac C and the so the Pac C and the Pac C Q, I believe, are the two that essentially fill in some of your elective courses. Um, they're very heavy, um, heavily based towards like PR and communication styles within the military. Um, the military world and so we transfer those courses in to give you those credits back that way um, you don't have as many electives to complete and essentially it, depending on how many courses that you would take per semester you uh, should be able to finish up about anywhere from like a year to a year and a half um, some of the uh, students that come in with those because it actually covers two of our elective courses so the full program is 10 courses or 30 credit hours. And if you come in with those two elective courses already covered, that leaves you eight courses to complete. And most of the time they can complete those in about three semesters. Um, but it just kind of depends on uh, your course load that you wanna take. So we have the eight week terms. So there's an early term and a late term. So if you want to just take one course per term, it'll take you about a year and a half to complete. Um, but if you wanted to double up on some of those, it could take you as little as a, uh, a year. Thank you. 
Yeah, of course. So any other questions? I wanted to ask a, a quick question. Um, so I was seeking out more advice for making the most of the networking and professional development opportunities throughout the program. I'm starting uh, IMC in the spring, and I know digital marketing has those built-in certifications, mm -hmm. um, but what would be the best ways you know, to set ourselves up with our, for our careers in our field, whether that be through networking or just, just trying to be career-oriented so you come out of this being able to market yourself uh, and find those jobs uh, that, that I, I feel like employers are looking for. Um, I'll take the first stab at that, Michael, uh, from, a, from an IMC perspective. Um, so first of all, what I would say the greatest advantage in terms of um, finding those jobs is differentiating yourself. So um, I tell students from day one, to put this on their resume. And yes, you haven't graduated from a course yet, let alone the program. But the fact that you're in a program shows the commitment that you're making to um, personal growth, professional growth, and understanding the industry. So first of all, I tell students on day one to put it on your resume and it becomes a conversation piece and it really sets you apart. As far as uh, networking opportunities, uh, again, something that I that I strongly encourage. So as you'll see, and, and I know it's hard to explain because you think, oh, it's online, it's asynchronous. How much engagement can I have with my instructors and how much engagement can I have with my um, fellow students? Um, we really um, create a, an interactive environment. I would say by the end of the course, and these are small courses, so I think we're capped right now at about 20 um, in any course. So you won't really be in a course with 50 or 100 other students. Um, by the end of the eight weeks, you will get to know them personally. Um, you'll form friendships with them, share contact info, we share job leads. Um, it's a it's a really interactive experience and i know again you think wow it'd be much more interactive if we were in person or if we we're but if you think about it in that environment you sit in the i i sit in the back and i talk to the three people who sit near me each week and then we go our separate ways um, in this you will you will interact with every single student in your class and you'll interact with your instructor on a weekly basis. And so those opportunities to, to discuss the course topics, build friendships, build that network um, are incredible. The program also provides other things I'm sure uh, Bree can kind of fill you in on. They're not at the instructor level, but they're more at the program level, uh, such as the IMC network, uh, other you know, webinars and sessions, and then also our Integrate Conference uh, as well. Yeah, I agree. I think it's amazing how much um, I mean, I noticed it as a student and as an instructor, you can get to know people even when it is it is online and you haven't met them in person, but just weekly chatting, you know, because inevitably in the course of those discussions, you're sharing things, you're, you're you know, highlighting, you know, some company that you admire or don't admire or what, you know, there, there's a lot of things that come out in that. And then the other thing is more recently in, um, in my courses, and I know you know many of the instructors do as well. I've incorporated more video discussions and opportunities around that. Um, so again, even with video, now you're getting to not only just read somebody's words, but actually see them, and and it does start to build you know relationships. And I know some of my classes they even had little separate uh, you know little WhatsApp groups or whatever you know you know little chat groups of their own that. Uh, you know, the, where they can share things as well, you know, just on assignments or whatever. And to add to that, Michael, um, we also have the mentorship program, and that's something that we launched a few years ago, but it's been really, really fruitful and helpful for a lot of our students. And essentially what that does is we pair you with an alumni from the program that either is working in the industry that you're interested in or 
um, in like a similar role to where you're headed and they can walk you through what steps may be helpful. So that right there is one of the main networking pieces that we always share with our students because that is so, so important. I wish we had it when I was here and in the program myself, um, just because it it's so nice to just have a familiar face and talk through those struggles. Because when you're trying to take the step to get into the workforce, it is so intimidating. Um, and I, I remember and I recognize that every single day when I talk to students, because um, especially if you're trying to break into a new um, a new career path, it is a little bit more difficult, but just having that familiar face and, and someone to say, hey, can you read over this cover letter or what is this missing or how's my resume? Um, that's always such an important piece to have as well. All right, so any other questions? I did have another question. Um, <clears throat> So I do have the background with the Defense Information School and then, you know, professional experience working here at the Iowa National Guard. But otherwise, my my um, my bachelor's is in social science. Okay. And so my question is, you know, do you think that um, I'll have enough of a foundation for entering this program or? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we are, and I'll, I'll let the instructors touch on that as well, but we are practitioner focused. So um, we have people who come in with a biology background, um, you know, main, like a, a business uh, administration background. There's, there's so many arrays that students have, but we are really able to lay the foundation starting in that intro course to give you the understanding of what you're studying and how to, or what really what to expect throughout the program. Um, and being a practitioner focused uh, degree program, it's really nice because like Dan has said, you're gonna be interacting with individuals who are currently working in the industry. And we're gonna really, as I like to say, we give you all the pieces to the puzzle that you need. So that way, by the time you get to capstone, you can very comfortably say, okay, I know I've done every single piece of this puzzle. Now it's just time to put it all together. I'll, uh, I'll just add this anecdote. Um, one, of the, one of the best students I've had um, was a forestry major. <laughs> and uh, he, he actually was working in the, I wanna say in Alaska. And had to take a plane. This is a separate story, but had to take a plane in order to get to an internet connection and submit his assignments on Monday evenings because he was out in such a remote area there. Um, so yeah, it, it absolutely can be done. I won't lie. If somebody has you know ten years of marketing experience, um, they're probably going to have an easier time in the intro course. And probably find a lot of it to be review. Um, but that doesn't mean that that's a requisite at all. Um, you know, really we start with, we start with the basics, um, and that intro course is foundational in all the programs, Samantha. So I think you'd be, uh, you'd be just fine. And actually with your, with your background with DINFOS and your understanding of public affairs and communications, um, and even with the social science background, if you think about identifying a target audience, motivating them. Um, what makes them tick. Uh, there's a lot of social science and psychology too in, in the work that we do. I was just gonna say something along those lines. It, I would argue that you probably know a lot more about marketing than you really think you do. Even as consumers, uh, we are, uh, marketing is embedded in our life. And a lot of it is very uh, intuitive, right? It's about working with people and understanding people first and foremost. And marketing today is not only data-driven, but it's also customer-centric. So knowing people is important. And my guess is you probably know people. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, thank you. <laughs> um, can you guys talk about the capstones within each department or if they're similar or different? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll start, I mean, I think, in, in the data program, the capstone course follows a, a particular brand. Um, so you 
or kind of almost like an agency for a particular brand throughout um, the eight weeks and, and each assignment builds on some aspect of that. So you have to do a research project, you have to do a, um, you know, an audience segmentation project, you have to do, um, you know, all these things, a budget and a, and a campaign plan and all that, but it's all centered on, on one particular brand. So it, it kind of builds from week to week. I think maybe the other programs are similar, but I don't know. Yeah, I'll uh, share from an IMC perspective. We actually like to think of the intro course and the capstone as bookends to the program. Uh, in the intro course, you know, we're going you're going to go through a campaign plan um, for a provided client, uh, target audience, campaign objectives, strategies, brand research, creative strategy, paid media, earned media, owned media. How does that all fit in? Um, and then at the end of the capstone course, you'll do that just again with a greater level of detail uh, for either a client that's provided to you or one that you uh, select, depending on the section that you uh, opt into for the capstone. And so that's, you know, kind of creating a real plan. So the one that we do in the intro course is a little more hypothetical. And so this one, you'll just take to a, to a deeper level and you'll kind of run, run, the, run those sections out and actually create that plan. Yeah, um, digital marketing communications is very similar. So um, it mirrors the intro course, but at a higher level. Mm -hmm. And that uh, you're coming up with a, an actual digital marketing proposal. And the cool thing about all of those is that that proposal is a portfolio piece um, that you take with you to Michael's question on a job interview. And you say, hey, look at this. I put together this for my capstone course, and it's a full integrated marketing communications plan or digital marketing communications plan or data marketing communications plan. And so you have it there, and it shows proof of, of what you know or what you're able to do. Um, and and they're they're great plans and a lot of them have been put into action, uh, whether it be for nonprofit organizations or the student's employer, um, because I know I, I work at a Fortune 500 and a good cohesive um, plan is, is still hard to come by sometimes. <laughs> so uh, so it's of value certainly for, for your employer or future employer. All right, we have about 10 minutes left. So any other questions that we haven't really touched on, whether that's um, for a specific program or um, maybe even any portion of the enrollment and admissions process? I think mine's on a personal level. So um, I'm just kind of all over the place in my work experience. I've done like engineering, but also nonprofit, but also car dealership but also public information, like working at a city. So I'm trying to figure out where I want to be. And I feel like I'm leaning toward integrated, but I'm having a hard time of picking because I do so many things that kind of scale all three of the options. So trying to narrow it down. Okay. Do any of the instructors want to? So Sierra, which, uh, what, which of those jobs um, got you up in the morning and excited you the most? Definitely the nonprofit and like public information. I would say the engineering and the car dealership and all that stuff was not for me. <laughs> yeah, I um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I would lean, I would lean IMC PR leadership AOE um, if it were for, for me. I, I, I have a similar background in terms. I worked in um, public information for public school systems as well and love that type of work. And I uh, found that the IMC degree was a really good, really good fit for, um, for that. There's a student, a Brie, I don't know if, um, I, I think we just featured her, Allison, who just was named Chief, Communi Chief Communications Officer for the city of Memphis as well. Um, and I think she's an IMC student. I don't know if we have any connection there or if she'd be able to provide any value, but I just, just saw that she was promoted. She's a former student of mine uh, to be chief communications officer for the city of Memphis. 
Yeah, absolutely. We've we've connected, um, I guess you would say, a potential student <laughs> to some of our alumni before. So Sierra, if that's something you're interested in, please don't hesitate to reach out. I can I can get that set up for you. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate it. Where are you at, Sierra? I'm currently in Delaware. Okay. Yeah. But I went to school in Penn State for my bachelor's. Okay. All right. Good deal. You know, Matthew just mentioned something too that's a good uh, thing is the area of emphasis. So you can, you know, even within a particular program, you can uh, get some some certificates or take some additional courses in. Because uh, I've had some IMC students who get the data marketing emphasis. So they'll take a couple of the data marketing courses in addition. Um, and, and I don't know all of all of the different variations, but that's another way that you can kind of get an extra an extra twist to what you're doing and, and get some exposure in some other areas. All right. Any other last questions here before we wrap up? All right. Oh, Matthew, were you going to say something? No, I was okay. just, uh, no. <laughs> all right. This has been well, fun. Yes. Thank you all so much for taking some time here on your lunch uh, just to connect and uh, really appreciate, uh, of course, our three instructors being here to chat with you all. But um, what I will do, I'll send you a follow up email with the information and the recording. Um, and then, uh, you know, any other questions that you have throughout this process, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we're all always here to answer any questions. So thank you all again. Yeah, thank you guys. This was awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Good luck to y'all. Thank you. Best of luck. Bye bye.